Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd ahabita fillah assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh wa hayyakum Allah jami'an Continue on in our study of Shara Sunnah lil Imam Muzni rahimahullah ta'ala we reach the portion of the treaties towards the end of the treaties where the Imam, and in fact it's a continuation of his discussion of Jannah, of Paradise, which was one of the tenets of creed that Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah uh, spoke about in their text in the codification of creed, meaning that when creed was being discussed, you'll find that in many of the classical texts, you'll find that the Imams of the Sunnah, that they spoke about these issues, the issues of Jannah and Nar and the hereafter and the uh, principle or the pillars of Iman and what they entail. And so Imam Muzani rahmatullah in this section of the treaties he began to talk about a ru'ya, meaning to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the Imam mentions, he says, قال, فهم هنا إذن في إلى ربهم ينظرون لا يمارون في نظر إليه ولا يشكون فوجوههم بكرامته ناظرة وعيونهم بفضله إليه ناظرة في نعيم دائم مقيم وقال وقال سبحانه لا يمسهم فيها نصب وما هم منها بمخرجين وقال أكلها دائم دائم وذلها تلك عقبى الذين اتقوا وعقبى الكافرين no. Allah uh, Imam Muslim Rahmatullah Rahmatin Wasiya. He says that this uh, when talking about the Ru'ya, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter, he says, So at this point, they will look upon their Lord, meaning this point in Jannah, this point in or in the hereafter. They will not be glancing here and there whilst looking at him, and they will not be in doubt. So their faces will be shining from his karama, you know, from the karama of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the generosity. And their eyes will be gazing upon him by his excellence. They will reside there in a state of perpetual happiness. And then he mentions the verse where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, We can have it, Kareem. No sense of fatigue shall touch them, nor shall they be asked to leave it. Meaning they will not be asked, the people of Jannah will not be asked to leave paradise. And they will not become tired. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al-Kareem, and Imam Muzni used this as uh, Adilla as well, for talking about the people of Jannah and their status. He said, uh, Qala subhanahu its provision is eternal, and so is its shade. This is the end of the muttaqin. You know, this is the final destination of the muttaqin, of the pious ones. And the end, or the final destination of the disbelievers is hellfire. So here, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fi Kitab al or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is letting us know that the believers, something of what they will earn and be rewarded for their righteousness in this life uh, in the next. And that it's eternal. And that it's for the muttaqeen. And that this is the final result of all their deeds. And as we've mentioned uh, prior to this, that the Salaf used to say about this life, that this life is uh, a dar al-amal. Uh, a dunya dar al-amal. Well, akhirah dara jaza. That this life is the time for reaping and doing righteous deeds. And the hereafter is the time for reaping the reward of those good deeds. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us 
with good rewards and forgive us of our many, many sins. Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Then Imam Muzani, he began to discuss uh, the status of those who disbelieved in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, of the disbelievers. And he mentions the verse in Surah Al-Ma'idah where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, but those who disbelieve, meaning the disbelievers, the kafirin, the mushrikeen, in the oneness of Allah, for them will be the fire of hell. Neither will it have a complete killing effect on them so that they will die, nor shall its torment be lightened for them. Thus do we give to every disbeliever. And Allah will take out from it whosoever he wills from the people of Tawheed. Meaning, Imam Muzani here, Rahmatullahi Rahmatin Wasiya, he mentions that the that Ahl Tawheed, they will not be in, uh, in the, the fire eternally. So this is just for being a Muslim. If a person dies upon Islam, meaning they didn't die on Kufr, they didn't die on the major shirk, that even whatever sins that they committed, they can be forgiven by Allah Jal. That their time in the hellfire, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wills and that they spend some time to purify for their and atone for the deeds that the, the wicked deeds that they did in this life and that they died upon, that if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to punish them, then he will punish them for a period of time in the fire, and then they will be taken out. And this is why the scholars they mention insha, inshallah, yu'adhibu wa insha'allah yaghfirlum. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he wills, he will uh, punish them. And if he wills, he will pardon them or forgive them. And this is this, this is with regards to Ahl Iman. This is in regards to the people of faith, to the believers, to those who died as a Muslim, even if they were a major sin. That if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the hereafter decides that he tabarak wa ta'ala and has an infinite grace and favor and mercy upon his creation that he wants to forgive someone, no one can deny that person forgiveness. That's the ni'mah. And that, that's a ni'mah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to forgive and pardon someone from Ahl Tawheed who was doing many, many sins or died upon the major sin, some major sins, accept disbelief and accept shirk, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, can pardon them and they have no reckoning. That's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If he wills, insha, yu'adhibu, insha, yu'adhibu. If he wants, he will pardon him. If he wants, he will punish them. Likewise, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, out of his infinite wisdom and his grace, mercy, and favor and his having given that servant the warnings that we had in this dunya, if he subhanahu wa ta'ala wishes to punish that servant who was disobedient to him, tabarak wa ta'ala, in this life, do, doing major sins, but he died on Tawheed, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, can punish him as an atonement, as a purification for him or her and then taking them out of the hellfire. So what we learn from this, and this is an important point of Ahla, of, of uh, the creed of Ahla Sunnah, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not punish the uh, believers eternally. That if someone died on Iman, they died as a Muslim, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and they didn't die on shirk or kufr, as we mentioned, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not punish them forever if they are punished at all. So this is very important, and this is why this is in uh, a book of creed like this, because this is one of the issues in which Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, that they held as a part of creed, as a part of faith, as a part of belief, and the, the, the a creedal tenet of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, and that at the same time that some of Ahl al-Bid'ah disputed about some of these issues. 
And this is why Ahl Iman and Ahl Sunnah that they wrote about these uh, these uh, important parts of our creed, so that they were helping to codify these beliefs and put them in textual form, so that those after them and those in their time would benefit and understand what the creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah uh, is. And this is another faida for us, another uh, important point for us to reflect upon is the juhud that the efforts that Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, that those great ulama of the Sunnah throughout time that they made those immense efforts and sacrifices in order to preserve the creed of Ahl Sunnah. Because in every time period, you will find those who challenge the i'tiqad of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. You will find people with new beliefs, new creed, wanting to take, wanting to distort, wanting to destroy the uh, creed of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. But they can't because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala intended for us. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that there would always be those who would preserve his religion and who would be victorious. A firqatan najiyah, the saved sect. May Allah bless us to be from them and not being from amongst those who go against them. Amin ya rabbil alameen. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ظاهرين للحق حتى يأتيهم أمر الله وهم على ذلك. The Prophet alayhi salatu wa sallam said, there won't cease to be a group from my nation that is on the truth. Meaning that Ahl Sunnah would be apparent through all time in one form or another, even if they were few in numbers and at other times they were large in numbers. But they will be present throughout time. لا تزل طائفة من أمتي ضالي للحق حتى يأتيهم أمر الله until the the hours established or until uh, the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is established and they and they will they will be upon that I mean Ahl Sunnah will be uh, present until the signs of the last hour until the very end before Qiyamah when ignorance will prevail uh throughout the uh, world and people won't even know basic uh, aspects of Tawheed. They'll just know that Allah, that their, their grandfathers and their forefathers mentioned about Allah and some of the other signs of Yom Al-Qiyamah. At this time, Jahil will prevail to such an extent that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will perhaps take away uh, Ahl Sunnah and there won't, rem there won't be those, those ulama and those people to teach and clarify the Sunnah of Ahl Sunnah, Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah, and this will be a sign of the hour. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that time and from the severity of His punishment. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. Our Shaykh Ubaid ibn Abdullah al Jabri, Hafidhullah Ta'ala, he mentions in regards to the Ru'ya, some very important points in a very uh, concise way, which is well worth our analysis and commentary on Imam Muzni's uh, position and Imam Muzni's discussion of a Ru'ya. So the Sheikh mentions in his commentary, he says, تَضَمَّنُوا هَذِهِ الْجُمْلَةِ بِإِضَافَةِ إِلَى مَا تَقَدَّمَ النَّصْرِ الصَّرِيحِ فِي بِيَانِ أَنَّ الْجَنَّةِ هِيَ دَارَ الْأَوْلِيَاءِ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ وَلَيْسَ فِيهَا الْكَافِرْ وَلَا مُشْرِكْ حَظْ وَلَا النَّصِيب So the Shaykh mentions that this section of the treaties where Imam Muzani is talking about a ru'ya, is talking about uh, seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that this is an idhafa 
to what was already discussed, meaning that this is a continuation and uh, of what was already discussed about the life of Al-Barzakh and the life of the hereafter, after death, and the event of the Day of Judgment, or the series of events and signs of Yom al that this is a continuation and a continuation of what will be the status of the people of paradise and even the people of hellfire wa'iyadun billah wa'iyakum min an and so he says and it is a it is clarifying for us what the people of paradise who are the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala those people who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has supported And that their dar, their place is paradise. And that there is no place in paradise for disbelievers or polytheists. And that they will have their own abode, as we mentioned prior. And then he mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem. وَهُمْ هِنَا إِذِنْ إِلَى رَبِّهِمْ يَنْظُرُونَ That the Imam, uh, that the Imam mentions uh, this statement, uh, Imam Muzani, rahmatullahi where he says that they will on that day be looking at their Lord, that they will see their Lord. This is the text of uh, Imam Muzani. And he says, uh, Sheikh Ubaid mentions, he said, this is the text which is referencing this mas'alam, referencing this issue of ru'ya, and that the servant will see his Lord is thabita bil kitabi wa sunnah wal ijma' wa hadhi ru'ya fi multanain. He says that this is affirmed, and this is why it's in these books of creed, it's affirmed by the Qur'an and the sunnah, and ijma, and the, the other level of uh, evidence, which is ijma, meaning consensus, the consensus of who? The consensus of Ahlul Ilm, the consensus uh, of the Sahaba, radiyallahu ta'ala'inu majma'in, and then those ijma, ijma'at after them. And so this is established in the Qur'an and the sunnah, and by consensus, that there is, uh, that ru'ya is a part of our creed, that we will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there are different times and there are different status uh, statuses of, of the different people, meaning whether a person is a believer or not, when, uh, and when uh, one will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So he mentions, he says, Ahaduha, He says, one of them, one of the times or places, if you will, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be seen according to the uh, evidences of the book and the sunnah and the ijma' is when people will be gathered together on Yom al Qiyamah. <coughs> he says, Femin al Kitab al Kareem. على أدلة هذه الرؤية قوله تعالى وجوه يومئذ ناظرة إلى ربها ناظرة. He says, and the evidence from the Holy Quran about this uh, time of رؤية, this time when uh, uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala will be. Uh, be seen is the statement of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he says and faces on that day will be bright from looking at their uh, looking at their their Lord you know faces will be radiant and light and shining from looking at their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala 
and then he mentions another verse in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem, Inna la abrara la fi na'im, ala ara'iki yandurun, in Surah Al Mutafifin. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitab al Kareem, and verily the pious, in the Libra la fi na'im, verily the pious ones will be in na'im, they will be uh, delighted, they will be in full pleasure. <coughs> they will be on couches reclined uh, and, and they will be looking. They will be looking at what? They will be looking at, and see the delightfulness of witnessing and seeing their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Tabarakah ta'ala. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith of uh, Jarir ibn, ibn Abdillah Bajali he says, we were with the Prophet وسلم, and he وسلم, said, He said, verily you will see. So it was at night. And it was a full bright moon. And the Prophet وسلم, said, verily you will see, talking to his companions, who were the righteous ones. The companions are righteous. They are the thaqat, they are the ones who uh, were companions of the Prophet ﷺ. They preserved the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose them for suhbah. Suhbah to Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala chose the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala to be the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And the Prophet وسلم, so he said here, he said, Verily, you're going to see your Lord just as you see that, that bright moon. So that is evidence from the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that the mu'mineen will see their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, Shaykh Ubaid, he then mentions, he says, وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ أَهْلَ الْعِلْمِ قَدْ أَخْتَلَفُوا فِي مَنْ هُمْ أَهْلَ الرُّؤْيَةِ فِي هَذَا مَوْتٍ قَالَ الشَّيْخَ الْإِسْلَامِ رَحِيمُهُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى فِي الْأَقْوَالِ وَالْأَقْوَالِ الثَّلَاثَةِ فِي رُؤْيَةِ الْكُفَّارِ أَهَلُهَا Then he mentions, طيب. So Shaykh Ubaid, he mentions that أَهْلَ الْعِلْمِ The people of knowledge, the scholars, أَهْلَ الْسُنِّةِ وَالْجَمَاعَةِ That they differed with regards to who uh, we'll see uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at this, at that uh, stage, at, at that, um, at that, uh, at that stage of, uh, you know, the events of Yom Al-Qiyamah. And Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions there that there are three different aqwal from Ahl Sunnah. Ahl Sunnah has three different aqwal. So, what about this issue? Does Ahl Sunnah differ over Aqidah? Because this is what this is a mas'ala that many people get into uh, dispute about. And some people declare others to be innovators. And if we look at the aqwal and we study some of these mas'ala, some of these issues, we'll find that, in, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah mentioned, in some mas'ala daqiqa, you know, very intricate, detailed things which have no uh, impact or import on your worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that Ahlul Sunnah, sometimes they had more than one uh, oh, And one of these issues has to do with uh, the ru'ya. You know, and some of these detailed issues regarding seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, about who's going to see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and when. So that this is a mas'ala daqiqa, meaning it has no effect on our belief or our ibadah, but it's a more intricate detail from various understandings of the nusus, of the text. That does not, however, mean that Ahl Sunnah differs in Aqidah, nor does it mean that it's permissible to have differences of opinion with regarding especially the usul of Iman. That's not permissible at all. Nor does it mean that we excuse those groups and sects like the Mu'tazila or the uh, uh, Jahmiyyah 
or the Qadariya, or the Khawarij, or all these other various sects and groups with their various deviant beliefs, deviant from what? Deviant from uh, Ahl Sunnati with Jama'ah, that we can accept those differences. Those differences are unacceptable. That's Ikhtilaf Tadad. That is Ikhtilaf, which is a contradictor, contradictory uh, differing of opinion. Meaning it's, it's no way to make uh, amends for that. It's, it's, it's a totally different understanding. And one is correct, which is the belief of Ahl Sunnah. And then one, the beliefs of Ahl Bid'ah and the various sects is incorrect. So here, these are Masail Daqit. These are very intricate details. And with regards to those intricate details within the context of creed, sometimes you'll find differences with Ahl Sunnah. In those Masail Daqita, these very intricate detailed matters which have no effect on our worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowing who he Tabaraka Ta'ala is. So, Imam Shaykh al Islam, Ibn Taymiyyah, Rahimullah Ta'ala, he mentioned that there are three uh, statements of the Salaf with regards to this. He said the first uh, is with regards to the Ru'yat al Kuffar. Uh, with regard, uh, there are three statements with regard to the ru'ya, the the disbelievers seeing Allah Subhanahu wa Taala on the day of judgment. One of those views that Ahl Sunnah holds is that the disbelievers will not see their Lord at all, and <clears throat> there that that absolutely they will not see Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and this is the view of most of the later scholars. So most of the later scholars held this view. And that is because they look at the general evidences of the statements of the classical scholars of many of the Salaf <clears throat> and other than them and they, they deduce this view, this viewpoint that the disbelievers will not see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala under any circumstances. A second view, which is a view of Ahl Sunnah, with regards to this, is that a disbeliever will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, of course, uh, those people from Ahl Tawheed, from this Ummah, and the hypocrites even, and the people of the book that were true people of the book during, uh, you know, who, who practiced their religion, that in the day of judgment that uh, they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for a period of time and then that the that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then will not allow the, hypo, the hypocrites to see them uh, uh, after that. So they will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for uh, a time, and then they will uh, be prohibited from seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is another view of Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. The third view in which some of the scholars of Ahl Sunnah uh, held with regards to the disbelievers seeing uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is that they, uh, a group of Ahl Sunnah, held that that the disbelievers will see Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the day of judgment, but it will not be pleasant for them. That it will be in a uh, in a have a punishing effect upon them. You know, where they feel uh, humility and that they uh, feel punished and it will be so uh, it will be something which will not be pleasurable for them at all. So it will actually be a type of uh, punishment for them that they will see their Lord who they denied in this life. So that is a third viewpoint of Ahl Sunnah. Uh, the second place in which is mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be seen as the Ru'ya this is the Ru'yat al-Mu'mineen Rabbihim fil Jannah Wa hadhi Ru'ya khasa bihim La yusharakuhum 
فيها أهل قول واحد ودليله ما أخرجه أحمد ومسلم عن سهيب عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم طيب the second place in which or position in which Allah Tabarak Ta'ala will be seen this is the ru'ya the uh, ru'ya of Jannah so the other was the ru'ya in Yom, uh, on the day of judgment and then there's the ru'ya the second place is the ru'ya in paradise no one will see Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala here except the mu'minin except for those who believed and this is a special ru'ya this is khas bihim. This is especially for them only. The delights of paradise. This is the delight of paradise. And one of the evidence for this is the hadith of uh, Suhaib, the hadith of Suhaib, which is in uh, Imam Ahmed's Musnad and collected by Imam Muslim in his Sahih. Uh, that the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, "Ida dakhla, ida dakhla ahl al-jannati jannah." قال يقول الله تبارك وتعالى تريدون شيئا أزيدكم فيقولون ألم تبيض وجوهنا ألم تدخلنا الجنة وتنجينا وتنجينا من من النار قال فيكشف الحجاب فما أعطوا شيء أحب إليهم من النظر إلى ربهم عز وجل in a hadith hadith قدسي the prophet عليه الصلاة والسلام said that when the people of paradise enter paradise and he, then the prophet sallallahu said and allah the almighty says do you you know allah the almighty will say to them do you uh do you wish for anything that i can increase you with so this is what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to the people of paradise is there anything I can increase you with? And they will say, meaning the people of Jannah, didn't you make our faces white and bright? Didn't you enter us into paradise and save us from the fire? Because that, that, that alone is sufficient. And Allah will say to the uh, Qal, the Prophet said then, that the hijab or the barrier will be removed. The barrier between people seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, the people of Jannah, uh, and uh, that's between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it will be removed. And they will not be given anything which will be more beloved to them than to see their Lord Azza wa Jalla. That's a powerful hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Letting us know that the love of the, the, the beauty and the delight of paradise, the highest stage of it, and why there will be brightness on the face of Ahl Jannah is the pleasure in Naim. Nadr to Naim. Why they will have that 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 that, that, that beautiful uh, brightness on their faces from looking at what? Looking at Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That this will bring complete contentment and, and joy to Ahli Iman. That is the highest level for the mu'min to achieve is to see their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala. That in the dunya they believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they never saw him. They believed that they would see him. And the delight of seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who created us, who never appeared to us, who we were informed about him subhanahu wa ta'ala, we believed him from our fitra, from our nature. And we believed in him from the book of Allah. And we believed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala from the sunnah, the message of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, from these texts, these divine texts. 
هذا النولج الغيب فما قال تعالى أليس لا من ذلك الكتاب لا ريب في هدى للمتقين الذين يؤمنون بالغيب Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after Alif Lam Mim, ذلك الكتاب لا ريب فيه. There, this is a, a book in which there is no doubt. It's the Quran. Hudin al muttaqin It's a guidance for the muttaqin. It's a guidance for the people of piety. For the people of piety, it's a guidance. Because they practice it. They learn it. And they practice. Hudin al muttaqin al yu'minun bil ghayb. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala begins to describe the muttaqin. Who are they? Those who believe in the unseen. So one of the delights of the people who believed in the unseen is that they will see their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala yom al-qiyamah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Almighty, to forgive us of our many sins and bless us to be of the abrar. Forgive us of our many sins and enter us into Jannah to Naeem and bless us to be of those who are honored to see his face, to see him, Tabarak wa ta'ala,